Okay, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we are going to do a recap on our training and what we're doing exactly for our program. So for me, I am doing four sets of everything I do, and I'm doing between 8 to 12 reps on most body parts. Now, certain body parts like shoulders, I'll be doing uh, probably 15 to 20 on like side laterals and reverse cable crossovers and stuff like that. Uh, certain movements I feel I respond better to high reps and other movements I respond better to like the lower 8 to 10 reps but generally speaking everything I'm doing is between 8 to 12 reps now if it is a top set and I don't feel like I got enough out of that movement then I will push past to 12 reps I'm not trying to hit 12 reps and be like oh 12 reps that's it I'm done if I hit 12 reps and I'm capable of doing more than 12 I will push past those 12 and I will go harder now Depending on how my fatigue is and how much I'm eating, that depends and that varies. But as of right now, that's the way the training is going. Yeah, so for me, basically the same. Uh, can, like We're basically continuing like we were doing last 12-week session, just with a new 12 weeks, to, except for you doing more of a bulk. Me, I'm continuing my weight loss kind of journey, I would say. But yeah, just... Continuing with like the four uh, four different exercises for each body part, you know, going with like around twelve reps for everything if I can. Um, but I'm gonna try and push more towards if I'm continuing to get all twelve reps with uh, every set, then the next uh, next week or next time I work out, I'll up the weight more until I end up not being able to do the twelve reps, and I'll try it a couple more times. If can't get it, then I'll probably switch the exercise out. You know, just kind of go from there, see how it feels. Well, for me, I really honestly don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm just doing what you tell me to do. So, for now, I'm just kind of easing myself into it. This is my first night to work out my arms, so I did take it easy. I did one set of everything because I don't want to be too sore, you know, sitting at my desk for work at home. Sounds terrible. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to be sore sitting down all day and clicking your mouse and typing on your keyboard. We all know how that goes. Well, sometimes I get angry and have to really press that keyboard. I gotta let people know. Yeah, you, you can't slam the phone, so you gotta jam the keys real hard. I don't I have am. a phone though. I have to just. That's what I'm saying. You don't have a phone, like oh, an old school okay. phone that you can yeah. slam it down. You know, like with a receiver and everything. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, so I, I'm the same basic way. So, what I do is I, I shoot for 8 to 12 reps, and then if I hit. 12 reps on a given weight next week I will go heavier and so on and so on and so on like I don't I don't stick with the same weight if I'm capable of hitting 12 reps if I hit 12 reps fairly easy or at least a modest like intensity I will increase the load next time because the goal is eight reps but I build to 12 reps so that way whenever I hit that 12 I go up in weight which puts me back around like eight reps and then I'll build that eight reps back up to 12 with that weight then once I get hit 12 reps I'll go back up in weight and so on and so on and so on but you can only do that so long before you'll stop increasing weight and then you'll hit a wall where it's like I can't continuously increase weight then fatigue starts to set in and you start to accumulate a lot of fatigue when that starts to happen what i'll do is i'll just back off the load and i'll drop the weight by maybe like 30 percent 40 percent of what i was working with and then i will slow the rep down do some static holds pauses very slow negatives and then i'll slowly build my weight back up to the weight that i was using previously but with a different technique or, or rhythm of how i'm moving the weights for that t given exercise and then once i stall out again again i'll back back down about 30 percent and then build back up and then if i feel like that that specific movement isn't getting nothing for me no more i'll just change that out completely to something else and then as far as it goes for you just doing one set of everything but the the difference is you're doing a complete routine but you're starting off with one set and the next week you'll go up to two sets and then three mm -hmm. sets and then you're going to build into it slowly which is the right way to do it because you got to let your tendons and ligaments and joints kind of get used to the movement too without starting to get aches and pains yeah and for me, like with just the like, it's I know it's only day two of this uh, twelve weeks right here, but like with the increase in the food and everything, it is nice having like the extra energy in general, and, like the extra fuel while I'm in there, like uh, not having to to gas out, which again could just be because just came off the week off and everything, but uh, just being in there right now and and having like just full energy to to just kind of push through and like really exert yourself it, it's nice did you up your food or what because i know you said that you have more energy did you put like, yeah. eat more now yeah like i i moved my calories last 12 weeks pretty much the entire time i did like around 13 to 1500 calories a day this time i'm starting out for 
right now I'm right around twenty eight to three thousand, just depending. Are you like in a plan to go down or something? I'll start going down. Like once I level out and see where my weight loss is, because I still plan on losing weight, but I want to figure out exactly how quickly I'm going to be losing with the higher calorie count. That way, when I pull back, I'm not just pulling at nothing. So scrapping. yeah, like so <laughs> far down that I can't really pull anything out. And I'm losing three or four pounds at a time, but at the end of everything, I started to gas out so badly that I didn't have energy to really do anything. Like I was, I was coming home and wanting to take naps again, and I don't like doing that. I like just coming home and still having energy throughout the day after work and everything. So this time around, like I said, I'm, I'm going to start out with the calories a good bit higher, go for at least like two or three weeks, kind of see where the weight loss is at. Because I should still be exerting more than what I'm intaking. So I should still lose weight. But I'll kind of base it off of in the next three weeks how much weight I'm losing. If I want to lose a little bit faster, then I'll cut out like 200 calories or so and continue from there. But at the end of it, I can be at like 2,000, 2,200 calories at the end of the 12 weeks instead of 1,300 so the the whole thing behind that is that that's why I always opt to do more than eat less because if you start off eating less instead of doing more, you have really nowhere to go except for to do even more with even less. So, and what I would do if I was you, I would actually structure the diet. So if you're you're gonna go on twelve weeks, you're at let's say three thousand calories, and then you want to finish off around two thousand calories, I would just simply take that thousand calories, divide it between twelve, and then whatever that number comes out to, that's what you reduce your calories every week. Just reduce your calories by whatever that you know amount is per week, and then you don't have to increase your output. You can just decrease your in, your intake. And if you don't want to in, decrease your intake because you want to eat more, then you need to increase your output by doing more cardio or spending more time in the gym. So if you spend, let's say, five minutes on the stairmaster one week, the next week go up to seven minutes, and the next week go up to nine minutes, and then eleven minutes, and thirteen minutes, and so on and so on to offset your calories through cardio and if you don't want to offset through cardio then offset through your intake because 1300 calories 1500 calories man that's that's something like a child or a teenager would eat and that that's i'm you had so much stored body fat because you're so extremely fat that you didn't really notice it in the beginning because your body had so many so much reserve you you just were fine and then once your body actually started getting down to your reserves were being consumed so rapidly, your body started crashing you and forcing you to slow down. And the fatigue came in really, really, really quick, like almost overnight, it seemed for you. And that's just because like your body finally hit that point where it's just like, okay, we're in famine and we're not getting enough food to sustain our, our, our size and our activity. So we got to slow him down or we're going to die. So that's what your body did. It kicked over into a state and then it made you start kind of crashing and everything. So, and also getting too low calories sucks because it really affects your workout and you can't work out good. And it, it always sucks whenever your workout suffer in the gym, because the whole point of this is to have fun while you're in there. And if you're miserable, cause you're so worn out from being on such a huge deficit, you really can't even enjoy your workout, which is going to actually hinder your results in the gym. Because if you're just barely trying to make it by, I mean, you're not really progressing, right? You're not, you're not, um, you're not, pers- what's the word on the, uh, Starts with a P, not not poverty. Uh, progressing? No, 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 no. Um, Persevering? No, another word for like uh, being successful. It starts with a P. I can't remember the word anyways. You get what I'm saying. Profiting? Prosperity. Uh-huh. It, you're supposed to be prosperity. Like, like this is supposed to be a journey of prosperity, not poverty. So whenever you're into such a, a horrible state of like mind because you're so worn out from the lack of calories and the fatigue building up that instead of being... In a state of prosperity and growing and succeeding and getting results, you start becoming, you know, in poverty and you're suffering and you're withering away and everything is just miserable the whole time you're there, you know. And that that's, you know, you don't want to be in that type of mindset. Yeah, the only, like, the thing with me, though, is, like, also just with before, like, even doing the 13, 1500 calories that I was doing before, throughout the whole time, I never had, like, uh, overall, like, I was hungry feeling, like, it was the food I was eating still left me satisfied throughout the entire day. Like I never really got to that point where I was like, man, I'm, I'm starving kind of thing, which well, is why I, egg rolls. It, it, but that's, <laughs> that's why like I never really changed it. So I just continued doing it. But like I said, this time around I increased the calories and again, I'm able to eat the food easily and get it down. Like, and 
I'm not having a hunger feeling now because, of course, like the calories are up and everything. But yeah, I, I just and I'm enjoying the meals again and just having the extra energy right now. We'll see how it continues to go if it fades off some, if it's just like a, a starting high kind of thing again or what. But but yeah, like it's it's going well. So speaking of being hungry, you're actually not hungry at all. You are overly full from the amount of food you're eating and you had to reduce your calories because we actually we're going to start you off at 2000 and then we backed you up to 1700 and even that was too much for you today, right? Yeah, I actually ended up only being able to finish half of my my meal, so I'm going down even more. It's just too hard for me. I like I said before, I'm not a big breakfast person, so I don't normally start eating Regardless, until about 11 or noon, I just kind of have a cup of coffee in the morning and it suppresses my appetite. Honestly, until about 1 when I take a lunch from work. Otherwise, I'd... So that's what's already hard is I'm starting to eat right at 9 a.m. And I'm not used to that. So I'm not used to eating so early to where it's harder for me because I'm not even hungry when I start eating. Once you do it for a while, though, it'll become a lot easier. You'll you'll, you'll adapt and you'll be hungry at that time. You'll... Your your well, body I mean, your I body don't... will change to adapt to it to where it realizes like hey I usually get food at this time where's my food well that that's like for me I'm not a big breakfast person I never have been I'm not the type of guy that can just wake up and just start shoveling food in my mouth like that was the hardest part especially whenever I was powerlifting like one of the biggest issues was eating a huge fifteen hundred calorie meal right right out the gate waking up in the morning so I understand what you're saying as far as it goes for like not waking waking up and not being hungry not wanting to eat that's something that it, your body will start to correct and fix but the thing is like when you get deeper into your diet and you start getting hungry in the evenings and you start going to bed hungry you'll start waking up hungry and you'll be easy to eat in the mornings once you start going to bed with that hunger in your stomach because even though you're going to be eating a dinner about an hour before bed that's not going to be enough to make you feel full and satiated throughout the night so if hunger will start to creep in, and that'll make it easier and easier to wake up, especially once the bloat's gone after the first two weeks, because the biggest issue too is you still have a lot of bloating. It takes about two, three weeks to get the bloat out of your intestines. Once that bloating goes down, what happens is it relieves pressure on the stomach. Then once the pressure in the stomach's gone, it stops compressing the stomach, making you feel like you're full. And then you can actually feel how empty your stomach is. And then that's going to allow you to be able to eat right out the gate because you're not going to have uh, gastro distress from the bloating and swelling of your intestines, which will make it easier to eat your food because your body's going to be digesting properly and it's going to make it easier to absorb it. And that's that's the kicker whenever I was powerlifting is I ate so much food that bloated me and it may be so just miserable, but it was just part of it and I just had to get it all down. But you'll, I mean, you'll get there after about two, three weeks, but so, you know. So what you're saying is I'm going to be skinny in two weeks? You'll lose probably <laughs> an inch, inch and a half more on your waistline, if not two, within the first two to three weeks. That's what most people don't realize is once you, the first two to three weeks, you're not losing fat. You're losing water weight. Uh, speaking of weight, I weighed myself this morning. I'm down to four pounds. I was 238 yesterday. This morning, I'm 234. I, I lost four pounds of water overnight. And the first two weeks, you're losing water. You're losing stool inside your stomach, like like food waste inside your stomach. You're losing water weight, water retention, inflammation. And then you're losing a lot of bloating in your intestines, which is causing your stomach to come down a lot. And that's what you're going to experience the first two weeks. And actually, that's normally whenever you really start to lose the fat. But you know this. You've been through this and you've been married right. to me for years. So. Right. Have I? Not. <laughs> yeah. No, but what I'm noticing too, I know it's only day two, but I'm just noticing after I eat, I'm not sluggish. I'm not tired like I was before eating whatever I wanted, like pizza rolls and you know, dumplings and all the good stuff that I like to eat. So and cheese sandwiches and hot pockets and ice cream. And right. I mean, it's just so simple just to throw something in the air fryer, continue working. And then when it's done, I'll take my lunch. That way I didn't miss time on actually cooking anything. That is what I was saying is a benefit that I do meal prep now. So I, it's kind of feels the same. My food's already ready. All I have to do is heat it up, but I do feel better. Like I used to be so tired during the day at work. And um, I'm not, and I'm still able to stay up at night and and watch my TikTok. Yeah, your TikTok and play your Monopoly. Don't don't <laughs> act like the majority of your night doesn't go to playing Monopoly. Well, not that long because I don't have a lot of dice. Yeah, so, um, but that that's that's the thing. So you two are the dice. So for me, I'm going back to the bulk, you know, and and what I, my my goal, the biggest difference for me between my cut and my bulk is I'm reducing cardio. And I'm increasing my calories very little. So instead of doing 20 minutes of cardio in the morning and then 10 minutes in the evening, then two 10-minute walks, once my knee's feeling better where I can actually get on the Stairmaster again, I'm going to do 10 minutes in the morning just because I like doing morning 
cardio, I feel like it helps my blood, my cardiovascular and my blood pressure and stuff like that. And I feel like there's a lot of benefits to be gained by doing cardio, not just for weight loss, just for overall general health. So I don't want to stop getting, I don't want to get out of that habit. So doing 10 minutes in the morning and then two 10 minute walks and that's it. I'm cutting the cardio out in the evening and I'm going from 20 minutes in the morning to 10 minutes in the evening once I'm actually capable of putting that load on my knee again. And then I'm going to increase my calories by 250. Now, I'm not going to have a set like I have to increase my calories by this much every week, every other week, every three weeks. I'm going to watch my weight and see what my weight does. And if my weight's not increasing, I'm looking for roughly around half a pound a week. But it's kind of hard to tell where I'm even at right now because coming off that deload week, I'm so fat and bloated and inflamed with water that like I'm not even really sure because I was 225 before I went on that deload week and I was 238 when I came back and now I'm already 234. So it's going to take this week and possibly next week for my body to completely level out doing the exact same food, the exact same thing for two weeks to actually see where I'm at from that week of not being able to move around because my knee and eating like I did. And then from there, I can start to adjust and gauge my calories accordingly to gain roughly around a quarter pound, half a pound. I want to be under a pound per week is what I want to be whenever I'm doing this, this bulk. But the whole goal is five months on a bulk and I don't want to put on that much body fat. I want to keep the body fat to a minimum. And if I can, I want to lose the body fat. And the whole goal is just to put on as much mass as I can, like that quality mass. Cause I want to, I want to be a unit, you know, I want to be an absolute unit. Like we used to say in 2008 and 2007 in the gym, you know, I want to be yoked. I want, I want to be yoked. And this one of that little old school lingo. I want to say old school, but older than I don't know what they say today. Right, but, Grants, we get it. Oh, no, I don't know what they say today, but I want to walk around being yoked, you know? What they say today. And, and then, you know, the thing, well, I don't know what they, because I don't, I'm not really in the gym anymore. I, I don't go and I don't spend time in commercial gyms, so I'm not sure what people are saying. on the YouTube, what do I, they say? I, it's all skits. None of it's real talk, so. Oh, gotcha. Th- this is real. This is real talk. This isn't, you know, like fabricated, like Instagram model stuff, so we're all fat and gross and we're all trying to get better and not hey, be so fat and gross. Speak for y'all. Not me. Oh, I'm speaking for you. I'm speaking for everyone in the room. I, I am the voice of reason and reality. I'm leaving the room because I don't feel like that might goes to me. Well, here's a nice tall glass of reality for you, sweetheart. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be on those TikTok videos I'm watching. Yeah. But yeah, so like I said, it's it's one of those things that like... You know, there, and in fact, the funny thing is tonight you're saying that your friend, I'm not going to name names, uh, they were saying that they want to have a sleeper build. They said, like, I want to have a sleeper build. Like, I want to wear clothes and nobody knows that I work out or look like I work out or that I'm in shape or fit. I just don't want anyone to even know that I'm into fitness until I get undressed. And then it's like, holy crap, look at you, right? I mean, and, relatable. That's exactly how it is with me. Yeah, and for me, I'm just like, yeah, that's great, but that that's the type of mindset. Where it's like I don't want anyone to know that I work out by looking at me because I want to tell everybody I work out, and then I want to show them my body. So that way I can actually get their one-on-one impression of every time I show literally everyone I talk to or bring it up somehow or find a way to talk about it to every single kind person. I like this channel. You're telling everyone. No, no, but that's what this channel is everyone. about. That's what this channel is about. I'm talking about like you're at Walmart checking out and all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I probably shouldn't buy this because you know, I'm I'm on a diet, you know, working out. I know you can't really tell, but this is what I look like. And then the phone comes out with the pictures or you lift your shirt up or, or whatever, like a sleeper build, you know. I, I'm sorry. I want to work out. I want to look like I work out. I want to walk around in clothes and people look at me and go, yeah, that." Yeah, that dude works out. Yeah, but that's you. Not everybody has the same and I'm, mindset. I know. I, I know that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But for me personally, I just, if I'm going to spend that much time in the gym, I want it to show. I want I want people to see it and recognize the hard work and be like, man, that guy has no life. And he spends too much time in the gym. Yeah, because, one day you'll catch up to me. I get it. Yeah, one day I will. So, but, well, and, and not everyone's goal is the same. Like, Richard wants to be an underwear model for Calvin Klein. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, you made a comment about the Olympia yesterday, seeing your future. Oh, that, now I see what my future self is going to look like. Is there is there any plans to compete later down the road? No, just joking around. There, there's there's no. Are you sure? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I, I just saw. want one chin, really. I don't That's know what I'm going for. Then why are you guys practicing posing tonight? I mean, everyone saw the thumbnail. I wasn't practicing. <laughs> I'm just legit. Yeah. <laughs> but 
Yeah, I don't know if I want to go for classic or open, or if I want to go for. I'm not. I know I'm not going to do figure. I, I don't. I don't want to be a figure competitor. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but like I just don't want to wear board shorts on stage. Like I want to show my legs. I put a lot of hard work into it. I don't want them to be like second best. But classic physique, I, I don't have to worry about like overall mass. But I have to keep the waistline small, and then over uh, open, I it doesn't really matter. It's just mass with conditioning, and so I'm not sure what division i'm going to enter in and see where you end up and then you can decide yeah i'm gonna see how my body ends up shaping up after this bulk and after this next cut and i'm going to see where i go from there and pick on which so i want to do because i want to compete a couple times i want to compete for at least three four years once i start next year at least once a year for the next three four years just because i enjoy having something to aspire to so what about you what what is your long-term goal um like i said i want to have one chin Oh, that is a good one. And I want to not be a potato. Mm. I don't, like I said, I don't really have an image I want to look like. I'm, I'm not in, like a bodybuilder myself. I just want to Yet. overall Yet. feel better Yet. as a whole. And then like... I'm working on it. Yet. I'm already confident, I would say, but I want to like... Hold on. Give her a couple... Look the part. Give her a couple months. She's going to be in the gym and a little to dunk the duns with a training bra. Well, with a sports bra like what I wear. Yeah, well, you know, I'm in a sports bra. Well, because you're training. (laughs) It's because you're training. You're going to be in the gym with a training bra because you're training. Watch. She's going to be showing more flesh than me in a couple of weeks. By the time summer rolls around, it's going to be like, man, this trailer, this this, this channel's really turned to smut, hasn't it? (laughs) So especially when Richard gets in shape, just wait. He's going to be modeling all those underwear, especially the ones that had like the, the, the elephant. No, oh. the elephants and the, the oh. bananas. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so what's your long term? For me, uh, it's always more or less been the same. Like I just I want to just be comfortable with being me. Naked. Like, I've never. I'm going to be comfortable being naked. Let's be not, honest. Not really just that or whatever. Because like, like we've had this discussion before. Like I've never really been one that's just like wanted to walk around shirtless or anything like that it's it's never been my kind of lifestyle i didn't grow up doing it it's never been something that i thought about doing on a regular basis you you came into this world naked yes but (laughs) they just we're gonna start a petition say richard shirtless in the gym we gotta get him shirtless in the gym we'll start a petition leave a comment in the section saying we want to see richard shirtless yeah Yeah, richard not julia (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like so. I don't, just, I don't. I think we get flagged for that one. I'm just kidding, I, I, I think, would never. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, right. Not for a, without a fee. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, if if I can just get to a point where I'm comfortable and I don't have to starve myself to to be at a a good comfortable weight and everything, that's something that I'm not always constantly worried about. Like, is my heart gonna stop today? <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're already working on that. I mean, you lost a significant amount of weight and everything. So let's keep going the way you're going and we'll work on getting that petition going to get you shirtless in the gym and stuff. So I'm going to sign in on the comments. Mm-hmm. Leave a comment. So I think that's going to be it for me on this one. Uh, do you guys have anything else y'all want to add or say? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate you guys stopping by and checking us out. If you've made it this far in the video, if you guys want to go ahead and leave a like, we'd appreciate it. If you've been watching regularly and you haven't subscribed, if you want to subscribe, we'd also appreciate that. And if you don't want to like it or subscribe, then don't do it. It's as simple as that. But until next time, we'll see you all tomorrow. See you tomorrow, but subscribe. Don't listen to him. Later.